Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. First at four, this is President Trump meeting with the president of Ukraine a short time ago. A phone conversation between these two basically tipped the scales, leading to an impeachment inquiry. There have been new developments almost every hour. Right now, we are waiting to hear from President Trump, who is expected to have a press conference really any minute now. He has been defending himself against allegations of wrongdoing on Twitter as well as on camera. The White House has also released a transcript of his July 25th phone call with the president of Ukraine. Congressional leaders are reacting to what that transcript shows. Let's get to Kimberly Gill. She is in the newsroom for more on all of this. Kim. Yeah, Karen, good afternoon to you. It's been a busy day at the United Nations and on Capitol Hill. Less than 24 hours ago, you heard it right here on Local 4 yesterday as breaking news. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi announced an impeachment inquiry would begin. Well, today the president released this transcript of the phone call with the president of Ukraine. And here are some key passages that a lot of people are focusing on today. The president of Ukraine says, quote, we are ready to continue to cooperate for the next steps. Specifically, we are almost ready to buy more javelins from the United States for defense purposes. End quote. Javelins are missiles. The transcript shows the president saying, quote, I would like you to do us a favor, though, because our country has been through a lot and Ukraine knows about it. And President Trump later goes on to say there's a lot of talk about Biden's son, that Biden stopped the prosecution and a lot of people want to find out about that. I think it's devastating. Uh, president Zelensky raises the question of defensive aid and within minutes, the president of the United States is asking him to investigate Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much clearer it could have been at the end of that phone call. People are really angry at Democrats. They're really angry at the Democrat Party. And things like, as an example, drug pricing, getting drugs down, things like gun safety, infrastructure. The Democrats can't talk about that. Now, former Vice President Joe Biden released a statement saying in part, quote, he's focusing on his campaign and not how the president abused his power to come after his family. So there's much more to come on this. Karen, as you said, we'll join the president when that news conference starts. Until, until then, we'll send it back to you in the studio. All right, thank you. Members of Michigan's congressional delegation have played a role in the push for impeachment. Now, one of the first to demand impeachment in sometimes colorful language was Detroit's Rashida Tlaib. We are hearing from her about why the impeachment movement picked up momentum. I think the blatant um, disregard uh, of the laws uh, disregarded the Constitution. It's blatant. I mean, I think uh, rumor out there is that this happened the day after the Mueller report came. I mean, they're, they're just this blatant disregard of the fact that he took an oath to uphold the United States Constitution. Our coverage continues at 5, 6, and of course on NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt at 6.30. Watch for team coverage of this breaking story. Again, we will join the president's press conference once it does get started. But right now, let's stick with our local news where local police and the DEA were seen raiding 10 homes early this morning. Now we're hearing from police on what they were looking for and what they got. This is Sky 4 video of those raids in Detroit. Warren Police Commissioner Bill Dwyer says there was quite a takeaway from the raids, which included heroin, fentanyl, crack cocaine, cash and weapons. We're told this drug ring was in business for 15 years and moved drugs throughout Metro Detroit. Mayor Jim Founts praised the investigators and put area drug dealers on notice. As long as there's a DEA, as long as there's an FBI, as long as there's collaboration and cooperation between federal and state agencies, we're going in there and we're going to shut you down and we're going to put you in jail. Police say eight people were arrested and will be indicted. We're told the investigation is ongoing. Moving to Sterling Heights, where investigators are working to find out how a deadly condo fire started this morning. 69-year-old man was killed in that fire at the home near Van Dyke and 17 Mile. We're told there were no working smoke detectors in the condo. Right now, it's believed no foul play was involved. The strike battle between the UAW and General Motors is now in its 10th day with maybe a glimmer of hope. Business editor Rod Maloney tells us the talks went late into the night yesterday, which could be a sign of progress. We're also hearing the future of temporary workers is one of the bigger sticking points. You can track all new developments right here and on clickondetroit.com. Also new at 5, Rod is going to map out what happens if and when a tentative deal is reached. 
Workers are not likely to go right back to work. It is a t timeline that you should see. The Detroit Youth Choir honored at the city for their achievements on America's Got Talent and director Anthony White got a huge surprise. Check it out. The Spirit of Detroit again wearing the DYC purple sweater vest. That big surprise, director Anthony White was given the Spirit of Detroit Award. The choir members all received a ceremonial Spirit of Detroit tile and pin. And the DYC even gave a special performance. Some of you probably saw some rain blow through town, and it is pretty windy out there. Let's check the latest conditions with meteorologist Ben Bailey. Yeah, Karen, things get a little rough and tumble. Wind gusts right now topping 30 miles an hour at Metro Airport and also at City Airport as well. The winds are going to continue to calm down, and there's not a lot in the way of mo moisture out there. We've got a couple sprinkles that have been exiting uh, across from Lake Erie and moving into Ontario. May see a few more before the evening's done, but again, it's really not going to amount to much. Temperatures falling into the 60s tonight as the sprinkles come to an end, but we've got a lot to discuss in the seven-day forecast. Thunderstorms, some possibly record heat, and then a big cool down after that, all coming up in a few minutes, Karen. A Detroit native held in a Chinese prison is home this afternoon after years of work to secure his release. Wendell Wright was a star football player at Detroit King High and then went on to play professionally. He went to China to coach football and it was there he got into a bar fight. He says it was self-defense, but authorities sentenced him to four years behind bars. Now he's beyond relieved to be home. His sentence was reduced following a lot of advocacy work on his behalf. Uh, finally, after all these years, after all these years of pain and suffering, I finally get to celebrate with my family. I'm home. I'm back on American soil. Glory be to God. There is a documentary in the works about Brown's experience, and tonight at 5, we'll have much more on Wendell Brown's homecoming. Today's senior citizens face challenges many of our parents and grandparents never imagined, from the opioid crisis to scam artists finding new ways to steal their money. Our Kim DiGiulio found Macomb County has a program that trains seniors to protect themselves so nothing will tarnish their golden years. The Macomb County Sheriff's Office wants to get a hold of all senior citizens who live in the area to take part in a class that could keep them safer and more informed. The Senior Academy takes place every Monday for four straight weeks. Sometimes they're um, not so much up to speed on the changes with technology and so forth. Um, so we just want to educate them on what's going on in the world today. The program focuses on things that seniors are in danger of, like opioid overdose by accidentally mixing their painkillers with alcohol or sleeping pills. We really want people to understand, you know, what those what an opioid overdose would look like and teach them how to treat it. It's like a nasal spray, so you're basically going to hold it like this and insert it into the person's nose. Mike Panowitz attends the academy every year. He sees how beneficial it is to stay up to date on scams that target seniors, asking them to send money for a variety of reasons. And they teach you not to do it. I mean, it's, it's, uh, there's, there's no reason to send money for any of those scams or anything. You know, that, uh, it's, they, they actually explain everything to you too about it. The program starts October 7th and it's held here at the Macomb Intermediate School District. If you're interested in attending, you can call the number 586-307-9311. In Macomb County, I'm Kim DiGiulio, Local 4. All right, thank you, Kim. And there are 60 spots left in that class, so if you are 55 or older, be sure to call that number and reserve your spot. We did post that number online at clickondetroit.com. Just look for the community.